So here we are with episode 9 of Stardust Telepath. Last episode was pain. This episode, I also expect pain, so I'm not excited for it at the very least, but we'll just have to see what's going to happen. If you guys like the video, like the video. If you dislike it, dislike it. I do have my full length up on Patreon and early access to non-seasonal and some seasonal shows on the YouTube memberships. Other than that, let us get started. Ooh, she needs uh, somebody. Somebody needs to come and give her a little encouragement. All right. <sighs> oh damn, she's cracking jokes. Yes. Meanwhile, this girl's out here shaking. Ah, oh, God, she is not okay. First place. <sighs> Oh. oh god. Oh god. Oh god, she's gonna straight up just have a fucking panic attack up there. Oh, the sense of humor. Oh, I can't be me, huh? No, you don't. You don't need to be perfect. Ubika! It's okay to fail as long as you learn! Like I said, she's gonna have a fucking panic attack up here. Can somebody please grab her and like... No! She's had- she's got a lot more- she's got a lot- She's got a lot more! She's got- You don't have to be like her, Umika! Oh, dude, she fucking blanked out? Thank the fuck off, they blanked out for me! <laughs> I didn't- I didn't want to see that! <laughs> Well, that's to be expected. Thank the fuck God you just narrated over it. <laughs> Who? No, it's not over. What the fuck? No, no, no. No, no, no. You won. You keep the fucking money. Do oh, damn. Wait, that's not even. <laughs> Wait, Ivan, that's not even your money. <laughs> Why are you taking? Well, technically, she did pay for for Umika. Doesn't mean that it has to be over. <laughs> Nylon, what are you? <laughs> well, she did say in the last episode. Uh, God, I'm on such a sore loser. That sweaty player assumption I said last time was truly. <laughs> Yes, as long as you've learned and you improve. Exactly. You think that you think that it was easy for her the first time too? <laughs> One failure. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kay's on the other side, like, what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> Damn, you've been sitting on this keychain? The whole group just fell apart. <laughs> Mars Market. I know you're sad and all, sister, but, uh, <laughs> you need to buy shit for me. <laughs> She's wearing an alien shirt. Oh, there's Kay! Still at it, still working. Oh yeah, it is summer break, huh? She's wearing a jacket too, like, Jesus fucking Christ, buddy. Buddy? Brody? Brother? <laughs> Awful! <laughs> oh! For the first time? 
Felt like a breath of fresh air. That's how she. Wow, that's. Look, you gave you gave K the same feeling that you felt. No. But you brought them all together, didn't you? Kane's wearing a moon hairpin. Well, that's because she's in the same profession as you. I say profession. <laughs> that's a fucking lie. That's also a fucking lie. うん。君の夢を面白そうって感じたから君と繋がって君と夢を共有したいって思ったから一緒にロケットを作ったなんてらい君の夢を信じたから今日もロケットを作った。If you were no leader, they wouldn't have fucking。君が欲しかった居場所はこの星にもあるんじゃないかな。うん。欲しかったんだろう。自分の居場所。And you found it. Rivon felt the same way too. Well, sometimes you just need an outsider view, huh? I do like this piano that's playing right now. I like that instead of saying it's not your fault, she says just <laughs> try again. Yeah, so you can fucking patch it up. That's right. Can't believe they show me those feet for free. Thank you, Kay. Thank you for saying the words that I wanted to say. That's right. Let's go, Umika. Ooh, give her a phone number or your WhatsApp, your line. Wow! Look at that case looking far into the universe. Sorry, the univer the university. Hell yeah! You need to tell this to Raimon. <laughs> oh! We're rivals after all, right? <laughs> Let's go. Wait, well, you have to return the grocery first to your sister. Hold on. <laughs> I'm inside. Come hang out. What if some fucking weirdo just see? Damn, she just fucking. <laughs> UFO emergency. <laughs> she hasn't even given the grocery back. Let's call the police. Maybe she left. Where's her fucking... And like the electricity's not even on? She's not here. Oh! Ouch, you're fucking hip. Did she even take the mattress? Like, what? <laughs> she packed up the mattress, too? Back to the Sag. Look, Umika, if you yell loud enough, maybe... <laughs> Look, you just need to yell loud enough. <laughs> Damn, dude, was she just fucking chilling in the light? Like, where was she? 
ユミカのお話たくさん聞きたいしあっ竹内さんうんいやごめん私いつも勝手に前にユミカを困ったばっかりなのにまたうんを避けちゃったのは私が何も一人で何とかしなきゃって勝手に思い込んでた、うん、ん暖かい光消えるわけなかったここに海かの中でちゃんとキラキラしている私を故郷の星に連れてってくれるって Wow inside your heart is a lighthouse <laughs> Well, what is it? Cry baby restart. What a what a nice episode. And、uh, not all that painful, you know? There's one thing that I like about this show is that it knows when to hold back its punches. Because, <laughs> man, if they had shown me the entirety of the fucking speech of her just stumbling through it, I'm just like, I can't watch this. <laughs> But alright, I'm going to. Write my notes and we will be right back to the center. It's written in the,、uh, the space language, but like, I don't, I don't know what it says. S P E. I don't know. I, I can't read alien language. Spaopok. <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> I was able to find it. The fierce hope inside you, the courage, or, your, or, or the place that you belong. <laughs> or D for all of the above. <laughs> Alright, so that was episode 9 of Stardust Telepath. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. You know that I always like talking to you guys. For me, I thought that this was a fucking good episode. What a nice episode. As I said, at least with this show, they know when to pull their punches. <laughs> Because. You know, when, when Umika said, I couldn't even remember what I was saying during the speech, and I'm like, Yeah, if that was me, me too. Thank goodness your brain blocked it out. <laughs> But man, this whole fucking first half,、uh, all the way until after K a y talks to Umika, it was just pure pain. <laughs> But if you've seen the chapter, you know that he, here we are, we are going to talk about Daimon. <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts right now. It's all kind of jumbled in my head. I mean, I've written down the notes, so I, I guess、uh, the first thing I'm gonna go on over to the whole fucking group failed. They failed to qualify, but you know, it's the thought that counts, right? <laughs> but we've got Daimon being the,、uh, the salty player out here. At least, you know, she's not out here talking shit. She's just a little upset and angry. <laughs> <laughs> well, out here walking away, and we've got Haruno who's coming to try and stop her. And so,、uh, hold on. Here, Daimon says, Must be nice. You don't care whether we win or lose. Even without this group, no matter who you're with, it's all the same to you. And、uh, Haruno's so caught up in that, you know, she couldn't even argue. She just lets her down,、uh, she lets her go, and Daimon says, This was the only place I belonged. It plays back to the last episode where Haruno was saying, Well, I don't really have anything that I hate in this world. And with Daimon saying, If you don't have anything you hate, then there's nothing that you love either. It's that feeling of, I kind of saw in when we first saw her, right? Haruno is the person who kind of goes with the flow. And because that, because she is kind of like,、uh, the word that I've learned, not, it's not, the phrasing that I've learned is that 
Haruno is like a seaweed person. <laughs> and if you don't understand what that means, a seaweed, when it's in the sea, it kind of just goes with the flow, right? It goes with ha where the, the ocean takes it. It follows whatever the ocean does. And so that's the way that Haruno is. She goes with the flow. She just happened to be captured in the uh, in the sea of, uh, of Umika and uses dreams. And even though she did say that, I would like to be a representative of Earth and all that for the Spatians. <laughs> the Spatians, sorry, the, the aliens. <laughs> Again, she still is very much caught up in these waves and uh, Daimon sees that, right? And so she's just like, look, if you were in any other fucking club, if you were in any other fucking cl uh, club, any other, I was going to say any other room for some reason, any other group, you would be fine because you don't think that winning or losing matters because <laughs> it's whatever, right? You're just, you're just the seaweed person. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I like that this is being put on to Haruno. I am excited to see how we will continue on with Haruno's character development because uh, as I've mentioned, we've gotten a lot of Raimon and Umika. We've got, you know, in, in like, you is like second place compared to what I'm on in Umika and Haruno has been the person who's just kind of been sitting in the back and agreeing with m most of their stuff or at the very least trying to compromise. With the loss in the bet that Daimon made with K, I, I, I wrote in my notes, they out here trying to compete with experts, at the very least experts in this field, or at the very least, at the at the very least, they're competing with some uh, with people who have way more skills than they do, who have been in this a lot longer than they have, right? They this is literally your first competition. How how what do we know about? K's team and how long have they been doing the competition and, and how long have they been building rockets compared to you guys, right? They obviously have way more skills than you. It's it's like a bunch of fucking noobs with one person who could kind of carry them trying to compete in a tournament filled with a bunch of fucking pro esports player. <laughs> That's what it feels like. <laughs> and even though I don't want to specifically put a blame on anyone. Naimon, she, she's kind of the person who has put such a high expectation on this group. And uh, from the way that she says, right, this was the only place where I belong. Well, she felt safe to be here and she felt like these people weren't going to make fun of her. And so because of that, she has a lot of a high expectation for this group, but uh, as I've written in my notes, they put up a lot of expectation without an appropriate countermeasure in case they fail. Fail or fail, whichever one. They're out here launching off as high as they can and they don't even have a, a proper uh, landing techniques. They don't even got like a fucking parachute at the very least to soften their landing. No, they're flying off and then they're crashing as hard as they can. It just immediately straight into the fucking ground. It, it's unfortunate that like it's, it, it is Raimon who has set this expectation in the first place, right? She is the person who made this bet between her and Kay and then bringing this expectation onto the whole group. And she's also the one who wrote in Umika's notebook that, you know, we're going to win this and stuff. And of course that influences Umika to like, okay, you know, that's what we're going to do. So. Umika, as the leader, now puts this whole expectation on everybody else as well. During the class meeting or the, the club, the hobby club meeting, that she says that we're going to be we're going to get promoted to an actual club, and in order to do that, we're going to win this tournament straight out, right? She puts up too much of a, a of an expectation, and it all stems from Daimon. Now, not to say that this is a bad thing, right? Because without Daimon, they wouldn't have an expert in their group. And uh, uh, honestly, Daimon is the person who kind of pushes them out of their comfort zone. And she is the person who, again, has high expectation and is able to bring these expectations along with the whole group, right? If the group wasn't in on it, they would have just been like, yeah, whatever, this is way too much, right? And they, they would just push Daimon away. However, they were willing to take on this expectation of Raimon and, 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 and 
they they end up here. <laughs> but the the issue with the with, with this is that Raimon uh, again she does not have she, she does not understand that y you can lose and still figure out how you can win for the next tournament. She thought that this is the only time th that this is a a do or die. Either you launch or you fucking crash. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's no in between. She she sees winning and losing as just two very extreme ways, right? She doesn't she's unable to meet people in the middle because of that. So they lose here, they didn't even qualify and Daimon as she said in the last episode, if we don't get through, why am I even here? <laughs> What's the point of this? And so She's just like, fuck it, I'm quitting. I'm out of here. I'm not going back to school anymore. <laughs> I like that next episode. It's just, we gotta get the gang all together again. <laughs> Can't even take an L. <laughs> Takes one L. Gives up immediately. <laughs> in which case, you know, Umika and Aiman are quite similar in that. We have seen how, how they are in terms of uh, similarity with one another. So it's nice, right? Y you can see that these two are just two sides of the same coin. But that's pretty much all I have to say for this beginning part. Again, I do find it funny that K is just over here like, oh shit, <laughs> did I just break up an entire group? <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Anyways, heading on over to Umika, who is feeling very down on herself because, well, she puts a high expectation, right? She's influenced by Daimon to put up a very high expectation. Well, Daimon hasn't really done a good job with making her feel like she belongs or at the very least feel like she is adequate in, 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 in this hobby group. Raimon is just in the last episode fucking yelling at Umika, telling her, oh, why don't you just go outside and pick up some fucking rocks, right? You're fucking useless. You might as well pick up pebbles. Like, you're, you're so much more useful doing that. So, it, it, again, Daimon hasn't really helped with that and Umika has already have had this onset of insecurity and lack of confidence and it's it, it only has been amplified even more now that we are here in this part where they have failed and also in the last episode where Ubika pushes you away because she wants to do everything by herself the way that she kind of thought in the beginning of this before she was doing uh, before she was about to do her speech right I, I did all these other things by myself I should be fine right I, I should be fine and I I look I, I agree with her but I also don't at the same time I, I get it she wants to do things by herself and that's that's okay right because sometimes you don't want to be dependent on someone all the fucking time but you, you know, in this case, right, with the way that you're feeling, sometimes you just need a nice little pick-me-up, right? You just need you to come in and, and, and tell you that everything's going to be fine. You're, you're going to do great, right? You're a fucking great leader. You, she, she just needs someone to, to tell her that. And it's unfortunate that the, the voice that is the loudest is Raimon. <laughs> Anyways... They don't qualify. Umika is just over here like, man, I suck. I'm not a leader. I can't. I, and 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 she says the the horrible words that she says to you. I can't take you into space. When Daimon hears that, sorry, not Daimon. Sorry, when well, you when you hears that, we can kind of see her eyes fading. Right? She has that glazed over eyes, and she looks at her keychain, and she's like, it's not shining anymore. This shining light. I don't see it. And so, well, with what we saw towards the end, you know, you kind of has the same feeling of just like, well, it seems like I don't belong here anymore. <laughs> the, the group's breaking up <laughs> after one L. <laughs> As summer break continues, Umika meets up with K, and K tells Umika that it was a fine launch. Right? That's, that's a good compliment, especially from your fucking rival. I mean, even though she knows, she she knows that she's like, look, we are technically rivals, you know, maybe you don't feel good knowing that I'm the one who says this, but she says it anyways. And I love that, 
K was able to reciprocate or I, I don't know where my sentence is going out here, but Umika had that feeling, right? That that feeling of like the, the wowness, <laughs> I don't know, like <laughs> exhilaration when she saw K launching her rocket in the last whatever pre presentation or something. And she is able to, uh, she's able to get K to reciprocate that feeling when she watches their rocket launch, even though it was um, imperfect. Yeah, and there's like the, the 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 wind's not doing all that great, but seeing their rocket firing up, and uh, firing up without any fucking hesitation or anything. That's a, br a, a breath of fresh air. And Kay is able to feel that same feeling that Umika felt. And in that way, it's just like, look, Umika, even though you feel inadequate and all that, you were still able to sh give that feeling to Kay. And I think that is a big achievement. That being said, Umika unfortunately goes into her self-deprecation stage once more, right? Talks about how she can't think of herself as a leader and Kay has to be the person who's here to pick her up. <laughs> Also, the, her realization in the beginning of this episode where she's like, oh, ma, oh my god, I'll never be like K. And that's the, uh, also, that, 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 <laughs> I was gonna say also? No, it's not also. It doesn't come from Raimon. This is actually comes from Umika herself because she sets a high expectation. She sees K as somebody who's just way above her, right? As she saw when she took a step on, uh, when she took a step and she sees how far uh, K is away from her. She'll never be like K. To which, well, yeah, obviously, you'll never be like her. You're Umika. <laughs> You're not K. <laughs> Who the fuck do you think you are? It's like, well, K will never be like you either, Umika. And, and, and so it, it, it's, it's such a this is uh, this is such a high expectation that a lot of people kind of put on themselves, and they put a lot of comparison to other people when they have to come to the understanding that they will never be like that person because that person is a very different individual apart from them. You don't want to be like another person. Yeah, like at the very least, if you want to look at a person's trait and you want to emulate it, right? You want to be as good at that at, at, at that person's trait. I think that's fine, but like being the person, the individual, no. <laughs> it's something that a lot of new creators in YouTube, because I uh, I manage another server that is for newcomers, new creators, and a lot of them have this issue where they keep comparing themselves to other YouTube channels, specifically popular YouTube channels. And I'm just over here like, bro, stop. Stop fucking comparing yourself to these other people's channel because the moment you look at their channel, see how great they're doing, and then you look at your channel and you're just like, oh man, my channel's not doing all that great. It, it immediately, what it does is that it erases all that growth that you've been having because you see your growth not as much as the other person's growth. But the, the, the reality is, is that everybody's YouTube channel grows at a very different rate. And as long as you still have growth in your channel, you are doing fine. But a lot of new creators, they don't fucking see that. And they'll see other channels that maybe started this around the same time and that channel just so happens to get lucky or honestly, they just make better content. <laughs> they see that channel blows up and they have that channel has so much more growth than them. They're just like, oh, I'll never be like this person. I'll never be like Mr. Beast guy. Imagine uh, uh, some people think about that too. I'll never be like Mr. Beast. And I'm like, bro, he's, he's one of the most subscribed channel. He gets tens of millions of views. Like, of course you'll never be like him. <laughs> but as long as the channel is still growing, right? And so that's, that's how I feel with Umika is that I, I see the growth that Umika has gone through this whole entire time. I, again, that speech that she did in front of the hobby group club meeting, ho hobby club meeting, <laughs> that's a really big step for Umika. Even though she stumbles and all that, she was able to do it by herself without anybody there, albeit she still got encouragement through the form of the notebook writing, but her her friends were not there for her comfort and she was able to get through all that and she was even able to make a pledge saying that we're going to fucking win this tournament that's a really that's a true truly big fucking steps
right? Those are some big fucking steps. Just like how that big step when uh, she was talking to these other girls in the group meeting, right? For someone like her with social anxiety, that is an extremely big step. However, she's too busy comparing herself to Kay that she's just like, ah, I'm not improving at all. <laughs> I'm not a good, I'm not char charismatic as Kay. I don't have a good sense of humor like her. Ugh, I suck. <laughs> and I'm just over here yelling at the fucking screen. <laughs> but thank goodness Kay is here to tell her the things that I want to tell her, except less screamy. <laughs> Umika was also talking about how she'll never change, right? She'll always be weak and useless or something somewhere around there, right? She'll never change. To which I will say, change is inevitable, all right? We are always changing as human beings, whether it's a slight change in our stance, our personality, and even in our taste in food, right? It could be as simple as your taste in food. You might like sweets, when you were young, but then as you grow up, you might not like sweets anymore. Or so, or vice versa, or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what the vice versa- You like sweets when you're up, but you like sweets even more when you're- <laughs> it, it could be a, as a minute change in that you could even- Your body, right? Could even have like a change, like you could have a mole pop up in your body somewhere around there, right? That's- that's still a change in your body. So I don't agree on the idea of- I'll never change. I mean, that's also something that kids tend to say too, right? Like, I'll never change. When I become an adult, I'll, I'll never change. <laughs> and then they change. <laughs> but, you know, just remember that, folks. Change is inevitable. And you are able to change from the person that you are. As long as you allow it. As long as you accept that you are changing. Because you know what, even though you do change, there are people who, are, who, who will be in denial that they haven't changed. So, so it's like Umika. <laughs> but you know, change happens. You have to allow the change to, to happen. And also, you know, change comes around in the world as well. You just have to learn to accept it. Unless it's like really bad for your health or something. I don't, I don't know. Don't, don't, don't accept those changes. Don't, don't accept the bad ones. <laughs> As Umika is going through her self-deprecation uh, speech and such, Kay's over here telling her like, Hey, you're a fucking leader. You saying that you're not a leader? The fuck, dog? <laughs> you, you're, you're, <clears throat> I'm sorry, my, <coughs> <coughs> my throat, it's being attacked. You've told these people your dreams and they didn't laugh either, right? I didn't laugh, they didn't laugh. And in fact, not only did they not laugh, they were enamored with your dream, that they were willing to follow you on said dream. And that is a big quality for a leader, right? To be able to bring these people together in order to focus on one goal. And you know what, Umika? You might be inept, but that's all the more reasons on why you have these people uh, to, to support you. <laughs> That's the whole role of uh, of these uh, of these shows or these anime types leaders, you know. You're you're fucking inept and all that shit, but you're you've got enough leadership qualities that you're bringing all these much more better qualified people to help you. Because <laughs> sometimes you can't do things by yourself, and that's why you got to get these people to come on over and uh, do the work for you. Sorry, I mean, uh, help you out with your work. <laughs> and I love that as Umika was talking about how like, oh, I was the one who failed this whole thing, right? I, I am the one to blame for failing the entire sh spiel. And Kay, instead of saying like, oh, it's not your fault, you know, whatever. She just says, okay, then go and fucking find some firm rooting again. <laughs> You, you somehow tipped yourself over or just fucking pick yourself back up. In the words of Kratos, right? Don't be sorry, be better. <laughs> and I love that Kay brings up her dream, saying, well, you were trying to find a place where you belong, right? You, you wanted to go out into space and find aliens to a place where you belong, but don't you think that you've already found a place that you've belonged here? And we get back to that words, uh, the words of Raimon, who says, oh, well, you, you've been wanting to find a place where you belong, right? Good for you. <laughs> you found it. And so, 
I, I, I like it. And also, again, with the uh, comparison to Daimon, right? And how Daimon and Umika are the same size, the same, uh, the coin, the two different sides of the same coin. There you go. Even Daimon had found a place that, that she feels she belongs in. So I enjoyed the talk between Kay and Umika. Kay is a good, a, a good, healthy rival, right? Who's out here wanting to help Umika get better so they can have better competition for the next year, right? Hell yeah. And I love that Kay tells her about like, hey, these people who join these tournaments, you know, the, the people who win, qualify and all that, they end up working in the aerospace industry. And she talks about university. And I'm just like, oh God, Kay, thank the fuck God you're out here talking about the future. <laughs> I would assume Kay understands that as high schoolers, you're not going to be able to build an actual fucking rocket to go to space. But by p competing in these competitions, you'll be able to get yourself into the aerospace industry, get yourself into a good university that'll take you into said aerospace industry, get you more knowledge in order for you to, uh, and, and you know, even get you to join a bigger team. Because, I mean, as much as it is, I don't think four people can build a rocket. <laughs> You're gonna need a bigger team than this. So to be able to do that, join a bigger team and, and, and get everybody to help you build this rocket and go into motherfucking space. So all of that, very much enjoyable. And we've got Umika who runs on over to the lighthouse, but she finds that there was no trace of you. And I say, I was like thinking, like, damn, dude, you fucking took the mattress too. <laughs> I mean, I guess she's going off somewhere else, you know? She's traveling somewhere else. <laughs> Does she have a dimensional pocket? And that, that I, I do wonder about that. <laughs> Where's she keeping all her stuff? <laughs> Must be one of her alien powers, you know, since she can teleport and all that. But we've got the classic ramping up of the name, and then uh, we've got Umika yelling out, screaming her name, <clears throat> and then. A glistening of the light and then the light particles and all I can think of is did she come out of the light like what <laughs> all right because like when we see her it, we see the lights shining down or is it going down yeah yeah it's it, the lights are just coming down on on you so you teleported here I would assume and she, she's just been chilling in the light or maybe she can tell I don't know. I thought she, I was, I was thinking maybe she can teleport from lighthouse to lighthouse, but she was able to teleport to where Umika was previously. So again, she's, <laughs> you've got fast travel, but also she got, was she like close by or some shit? She just hears Umika yelling. <laughs> I don't know. You know, at some point I'm starting to think that maybe you isn't a a actually an alien. She's just a manifest of the lighthouse. <laughs> I don't know. The, the only thing that makes me think that she is, not the only thing, the thing that makes me think that she truly is an alien is just because of all the powers that she has. So I feel like there's more evidence on that. But then uh, towards the end with uh, with with you ta singing, right? She remembers a, a song from her home country and she goes and she sings the song of her people, which I thought was pretty nice. And we've got the, uh, I assume maybe this is like the whole, the, the full song. If it's, if it's a full song, a full-fledged song in the alien language, that's pretty nice. I really like that. Because there's the same, there's like another song uh, that's like spoken in the, the, the alien language of Avatar. So that's pretty nice. I always enjoy songs that goes into its own, you know, special language and such. I do like this part from you where she was about to touch foreheads, but then she doesn't because she kind of learns that, okay, you know, I, 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 I've been a little brash. Sorry, I've been a little brash. I don't think that's the word, but I, maybe I've been a little too forward with you. I, and <clears throat> seeing that Umika pushed her away last episode, she's just like, okay, you know, all right. Like, again, I, I've been a little bit too forward, so I don't want to go and touch your forehead. <laughs> without permission you know so i was like i like that that's nice but you sorry umika tells you uh the reason why she didn't do that and perhaps you know uh umika continues to give you the okay to just you can just touch my forehead whenever you know <laughs> they be out here touching hands and shit gay shit dude gay shit <laughs> 
We continue to have the idea of the light that lives inside Umika. Uh, she, Umika is the lighthouse for everyone. <laughs> Although in my notes, because Umika says, sorry, you says, uh, this light isn't just for me, right? It's going to be for the people that you're going to help. <laughs> and I just wrote in my notes that Umika's light lives inside her and it's rated E for everyone. <laughs> It's rated E for everyone, that's for sure. It's it's for everyone who's willing to come into her congregation. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, again, you were singing that song and it, it was mysterious, unfamiliar, yet it makes it makes Umika feel nostalgic at the same time. And it gives, this song gives Umika a courage. It gives a fierce hope inside her to take the next step. So, uh, again, next episode. We gotta get the gang back together! <laughs> it, just, it feels like we had like a third act breakup or something. <laughs> but, yeah, it's uh, very nice. The reason why I wrote in my notes that says makes Umika feel nostalgic is because I'm just like, maybe she has met an alien before, you know? Maybe we, we have that cliche of they've met each other before who, uh, they've met each other when they were kids or some shit, but I, <laughs> probably not. So let's not think about that. But maybe, just maybe, right? Yeah, Umika has met an alien before, who knows? And maybe she has heard a similar song, but not this song. Who knows, right? Who knows? We still have that whole, like, alien language dictionary and such. So, but as I said, this was a, a, a fucking good episode. Great even. I, I really enjoyed this episode. And if I have anything else to say, I will write it in the description down below. Thank you guys for sticking around and I will see you guys in the next episode.